Hey guys, support to death, and welcome back to another Subnautica guide. Today we're going to be covering uh, how to build a farm, uh, and we're just going to do like a really simple base. So what this will do is this will actually get you uh, food and water that you can just go back and pick up whenever you need it, so you don't have to keep hunting around for bladder fish and uh, peepers in order to stay alive. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to the island uh, where um, you can get a lot of the blueprints that you need. So to get to the island. All right, what you want to do is, when you're on the ship, look for this cloud formation right over there. Uh, it's the only cloud that actually stays on the horizon, like all the other clouds are floating above it, and if you take a look at it, even though the clouds are moving, it's stationary. Now, before you go, uh, one of the tips I'll give you is uh, get as much out of your inventory as possible. You're going to need a lot of inventory space, and you won't need food and water when you get there because the place will be full of food and water. So hang on one second, and I'm going to take the sea glide and get over there. Okay, so we're almost at the island. Uh, just for a frame of reference, the aurora is there, and your life pod is over there to the left. If you can see both of those things, you know you're in the right. You're going in the right direction. So you want to be toward the aft end of the aurora, and the life pod is about 1,400 meters away. I think I actually kind of came at it sideways. I think I took a wrong angle, so it's probably a little bit closer than that. Okay, we're back. I did kind of come at it at a little bit of an angle, so I didn't quite get to where I was supposed to go. Alright, so let's get to the island, and there's four main points you want to look for. There are two bases at the top, there's one base in the middle, but there's also uh, some grow pods that you're going to want to get first. Um, the grow beds, I think, are at the, the beginning of the island, and you can scan everything here, but not everything is something that you can bring back with you. Um, you can bring the main plant back with you, but I don't think it actually gives you any food or water, it just looks nice. So if you want a seed from it, take out your knife, give it a hit, and you get a seed. There we go. Can't eat it, but you can plant it, if you want one. Okay, so a little bit further up the path, this is the first place you're going to want to stop. You've got an exterior grow bed, which we're probably not going to use this time, but you're going to want it in case you build a base that actually goes above the water, and you can actually just have a grow bed that goes outside. Uh, the other thing you have are these marble melon plants. Alright, so if you want to get a marble melon plant seed, you actually just have to hit it, and you should get four seeds per plant. If you want to eat it, just pick it up. Marble melons are really good because they give you both food and water. Oh, there we go. So that's the first thing we're looking for. Marble melons are actually really important because it's one of the staple crops of the game. Okay, so we've actually reached the first base, which is atop the first hill. So for frame of reference, the place where I found found the uh, marble melon plant and the planters is actually right out there, right near where you come in, and I think where you come in is down there. There's a, a sea, like a little path that comes up. Alright, so here uh, you want to scan everything you can see, uh, but the most important thing is you're going to find uh, a multi-purpose room on one of these wrecks. Uh, but the bulkheads are really useful, there's uh, a bunch of useful items in here, and there's a bunch, uh, also a bunch of PDAs. And if you're getting thirsty, they give you some water. Alright, uh, while we're here, uh, there's a couple other plants in here. Alright, so your indoor grow bed is here. You're definitely going to need this, because this is what you're going to use in your first base. Alright, and you're also going to want to collect one of the lantern fruit. Now, you can eat these, or you can just save them until you go back. Uh, oh, definitely scan the observatory. Um, if you have a bunch of this food and you're worried about it going bad before you set up your grow beds and your plants, uh, in your farm. Uh, don't worry, you can actually plant rotten fruit, and it's actually fine. So one of the other useful things that's out here is a spotlight. It's on the outside of any one of the, uh, uh, the higher up, uh, uh, base parts. Um, it's definitely useful because, uh, you can put it on your base and it makes it a little bit easier to see. And, uh, no, I totally didn't forget to get that and shoot this completely out of sequence while I was waiting for something else. Totally not. Totally not. Okay, so the second and third places you want to go, there's a small base down here, and then there's another base up there. Definitely hit both of those. There's a couple of important items as well that aren't related to farming, but you definitely want to grab them. Uh, one of them, there's a weird alien artifact in here. Uh, so definitely don't miss this if you're here. And don't worry about the damage. I'm just, you know, falling down. Um, so yeah, it's a purple tablet. You do also have these little crab things. Stop admiring the purple tablet, please. And kill the crab. 
They're not incredibly dangerous, you just have to hit them with a knife a couple of times. You can't eat them. They're just there to be annoying. Uh, you know, scan everything you can again, the desk, but the grow bed and the multi-purpose room are the most important things, so just make sure you get those. Oh! And before we leave, there's a stasis rifle fragment here as well. Okay, before I go any further, there's a little abandoned PDA over here. If you grab it, that's going to give you another signal source, so you definitely want to come over here. Uh, there's a little path uh, from that central area that I was just in. If you just kind of run around here, up the path, this will bring you back to this one area where we found the purple thing. Okay, so it's getting kind of dark, but uh, I am back in the first encampment. I'm actually just kind of hanging out. Uh, and the multi-purpose room, you can scan it, it's right here. If you have that, then you pretty much have everything you need in order to start uh, putting together your farm, uh, except for the tool that you're going to need to actually build your base, which we're going to cover in a little bit. New and I actually got up here enough to... Uh, in the Aurora's drive core. The reactor will reach a supercritical state in T minus. I figured I'd just share the explosion with you guys. It's kind of a bonus, if you haven't seen it yet. Five, four, three, two. There we go. I didn't even get up here until uh, I was climbing the mountain in the dark, and I didn't want to continue to do the... Uh, uh, the tutorial, well, you know, you couldn't see anything. Alright, so you, uh, you can still scan a couple of things up here. There's plant pots, there's a couple of things. Uh, there's another one of these down at the other area, too. It's a Chinese potato plant. So be sure to grab one of those, because you can also eat Chinese potato plants. They give you a lot of food. Uh, and over here is your swivel chair. Okay, so there's one more plant we definitely want to grab. Uh, there's a tree that actually produces a lot of water, so I'm going to grab that on the way down, and I'll show that to you guys next. Uh, between the marble melon plant and the tree that creates a lot of water, uh, you're pretty much set. The Chinese potato plant and the other plant, the Ming plant, the Ming plant is actually just for, for decoration, and the Chinese potato plant can be used for food, but between the other two plants, I think that's actually all you really need to keep going, as long as you have a couple of decent planters. Okay, so the last thing you're definitely going to want to grab while you're on the island is a seed from the bulbo tree. These things actually give you a lot of water. I'm actually going to drink one right now because I'm running a little bit low. Uh, it gives you 8 food and 10 water. Uh, and you can cut the tree a couple of times before it will actually break down. So just grab one of these seeds and bring it back with you. Okay, so the next thing we're going to need is to be able to build the Habitat Builder. So to do that, you're going to need a computer chip, a wiring kit, and a battery. The batteries are easy, it just takes uh, one piece of copper and two of the acid mushrooms. Uh, let's take a look at the wiring kit and the computer chip. Uh, computer chip requires two table coral, gold, and copper wire. Uh, and the wire, uh, wiring kit requires two silver ore. Um, it seems like those things would be hard to get, like gold and silver at this point in the game, but if you actually venture out just a little bit further, uh, they're a little bit more common. There are a lot of um, uh, radio signals that you pick up at this point that you can go and explore, and if you explore them, you should be able to find at least the, the two silver and the one gold that you need, as well as a lot of copper, because copper is actually not that hard to find. Okay, so one of the hints you can have for trying to figure out... Oh, crap! Uh, is... Sandstone is more likely to have a rarer element like silver or gold. I'm just going to take this now. Oh, hey, I got my gold! I'm just going to get away from him. Then limestone. Uh, the, the two types of outcroppings are sandstone and limestone. Sandstone, again, you're going to get more rare elements. You're going to get gold. You're going to get silver. Uh, you might get some lead. Uh, limestone, you're probably going to get titanium. So look for sandstone outcroppings. Uh, and generally, you find them in sandy areas. Okay, so one of the final ingredients you're going to need is table coral, and it's super easy to get. Uh, it's right underneath the life pod on this rock outcropping, so all you got to do is come down here, take a knife, and just grab a couple of pieces of table coral. And I think that's actually everything we need in order to craft what we need in order to make the uh, habitat builder, okay? So, come over here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put together our wiring kit, which is two pieces of silver. Alright, and I took the liberty of making the copper wire, because copper is very common. So we have our table coral, or gold, or copper wire.
And then... Under here. So we've got our battery, our wiring kit, our computer, and now we have our habitat builder. The builder tool is designed to construct habitats capable of withstanding extreme environmental conditions. Okay, so one of the things you're going to want to do before you uh, actually start building is grab as much titanium as you can out of your inventory, uh, because when you do start to create buildings, it does use up a lot of titanium. Um, you're also going to want to have some quartz, because you're going to need glass. I think I actually have a piece of glass. Alright, so let's get started building a habitat. Okay, hang on one second. We're going to wait for daytime. Okay, now that we can see what we're doing. I'm going to go down, and we're going to pick a building site. Um, now, for my first, uh, I usually try to keep it close to the life pod, because that's where the fabricator is. Uh, and you're not going to have enough technology to build a fabricator of your own for a little bit. Also, you're basically just setting up a farm at this point, so you don't really need to make a huge base. You just want something that you don't have to keep farming for, or you don't have to keep hunting for uh, peepers and uh, bladderfish in order to, to keep going. Uh, oh, is it more titanium? All right, more metal salvage. We need that. All right, so... We can start with, uh, a, not a reinforcement, a foundation. Um, they're not necessary, because if you build a multi-purpose room, it should actually have its own legs. And for this, I don't think we really need the foundation, because we're not going to build too much. We're just going to build a couple of layers high, because uh, that's really all you need is about two layers of multi-purpose rooms. So, just hold the X button. And that should make the room, and then the legs should connect to the bottom of the ocean floor. And if they don't, oh no, there we go. All right, and then what we're going to want to do? To separate work and leisure spaces to maximize productivity. Treat okay. As your home, but never forget that it is not. Okay. Uh, now that she's done talking, we're going to take another one, and we're just going to stack it right on top of the first one. Right, and let me just swim down and make sure everything is connecting properly, because that is one of the big problems in the beginning of the game, is just making sure everything connects right. Alright, so now we've got a two-tiered building, and it's going to reduce... See, it says the base strength is now down to 7.5%. The more you build onto it, uh, the weaker it's going to get, but you don't need to build too much. Alright, so now I'm going to put a door on it, and I'm going to put the door closest to the pod because that's most likely the place I'm going to come into a lot. Uh, so we just got to find a hatch, which is you. I need quartz for that. All right, we'll be right back. We're going to grab some quartz. Okay, so I've got the quartz. All right, so I'm going to go over here, and we're going to construct a hatch. All right, just put it right there. Oops. Yeah, I keep forgetting you, when you do this, hit the X button and not the R2 button, because it just closes the menu. All right, now we have our hatch, but we're not quite done. We also need uh, a source of power and a source of air. So what you can do is go over here, you can get a solar panel. Oh, oh now i got to get copper ore. Uh, and you're going to get a base-attached air pump. i got plenty of titanium, so let's do that. What you want to do is take the air pump and just stick it on the structure like so. And put it there. All right, and we'll get a series of tubes that will connect it to the surface, and that'll pump the air. All right, so let me get the copper. Okay, got the copper. So next we'll construct a solar panel. And it works because you're actually pretty close to the surface. So you'll get light most of the day, and that'll provide enough power that you won't need to worry about it. And that'll just attach to the top. I just grabbed all the rest of the, uh, the minerals and, uh, and items I had to do crafting. So now it's got power. And the last thing we need to do is we need to craft some tubes. That you can't actually do with the Habitat Builder. You actually have to go back to the Fabricator. So it's a good reason not to, to go too far. It just requires a little bit of titanium. Oh, sorry. It is in... Where is the series of tubes? Oh, it's right here. Okay, so after some fumbling around, two pieces of titanium will go five pieces of pipe. And the pipe has little bits of floaty things on it. What you want to do is go into your inventory and equip the pipe. And you only have to equip one of them. And the rest of them will stack. So go back to your habitat. There we go. This part gets a little bit tricky. What you want to do is attach one end of the pipe here. And see, it'll actually automatically attach. 
and then try and push it up as high as it will go toward the surface. And then just hit R2 and it will deploy. And just kind of keep doing that, try and get them as straight up as you can, uh, until it actually reaches the surface and breaks the surface. Alright, and one more ought to do it. And if we break the surface, we can see... Oh no, it's not quite enough. I need one more piece of pipe. Alright, I have plenty of titanium, so we'll just go grab another piece of pipe real quick. Um, if I had built the base a little bit higher, that might have made it, so... And if you have extra pipe, you can leave it in storage for the next base, and then you can just use that, because chances are the next base will probably be closer, uh, further down into the water. And there we go. Okay, let's finish that off. It's a little frustrating too, because it's like right there, but it's not quite right. There we go. So now it's connected to the surface, and you can get air. Because if you go in... Before that, your oxygen level will just drop, and then you can't do anything. Alright, so now that we're in the base, we need to connect both of the levels. Uh, so we'll go back to the Habitat Builder, which I have to put back on. Alright, and we're going to want to make a ladder. Oops. Which is over here, so just grab that. Um, you can face it any way you want, uh, if you hit the L and R buttons. Oh, I didn't know you could even put it back that way. Um, oh, it can... It, all right, so it can actually connect to any one of these. I'm going to put it over here, because I put it in the center before. And uh, I think it actually works better there. Because now I have more floor space, and I can just use this to go between the two levels. All right, and you just click on it again, and it will bring it back down. Okay, so now we need to make some grow beds. So, go over here, and we're going to select the grow beds. Oh, good, and I do have enough to make it. So, I'm going to make the first one. There we go. Now, it's going to take a little time before this starts to pay off. Once you've got your grow bed, left-click on it, right, and just transfer your seeds using R2 to the new container. Now, I'm going to put all the marble melons in this one, uh, and what that's going to happen is you're going to get four marble melons, and then I'm going to cut them with the knife, and then I'll have 16 seeds, and they can all go in the grow bed, and then they're self-sustaining. Um, it takes about a day for your plants to grow, um, so, you know, while you're waiting for that, um, I would go ahead and make another one of these, and I'm out of titanium. Alright, so I'm going to go grab it, get some titanium, and then I'll be back. Okay, we have the titanium, so now we can make the other two grow beds. I do recommend at least making three grow beds. Um... Mostly because you want to overproduce, so you can always make more seeds. So I'm going to put one there, and as to not block anything up, I'm actually just going to go up another level. And if you want to use some of the extra space, you can make lockers over here, or fabricators, or whatever you want. Um, this is basically just to make sure that you don't have to keep running around trying to hunt for fish in order to to uh, sustain yourself while you're trying to explore. It's just to, to make everything a little bit easy for you. Okay, so now we've got all our seeds. Uh, for the planter down here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to put the uh, bulbo tree sample in it. And as you can see, it's already rotten, but that's okay. Uh, because it doesn't need to be fresh in order to grow. Uh, upstairs, I'm going to actually put uh, the Chinese potato plant. Uh, and I'm going to put the rotten lantern fruit. Uh, that should give me potato plants and lantern fruit. Lantern fruit don't give you a lot, but they do produce a lot of fruit, and they're good for bioreactors. Um, I could plant the mink plant, but uh, the mink plant doesn't really do anything. Uh, so I'm actually just going to keep that in storage until I find uh, some place I want uh, just some decoration. So let's give it a couple of days and see what the, the finished result looks like. So one of the things you're going to notice is your base doesn't really stand out. It kind of blends in with the background, so one of the things that we can do is we can take a spotlight and stick it on the base, and it'll make it stand out a little bit more, so as you're coming from further away, you can see it a little bit better. So you just want to grab your construction tool here, and find the spotlight, which I totally did not forget to scan the first time. <clears throat> I got it right, I got it right the first time! Um, yeah, you, I, I, didn't, I didn't forget that at all. I didn't just stick one on the outside. Right? 
And there we go. And that should make it a little bit easier to see at night. It's totally decorative, you don't need it. You know, it's just kind of nice. Alright, so let's check in our plants. Welcome aboard, Captain. Okay, so we're not quite done with our construction here. We still have to really kind of optimize this. So we're going to take the knife, and we're going to cut all four marble melons, if it'll let me. Okay, and then we're going to plant 16 seeds, and this will completely fill the planter. And then you never have to worry about marble melons again. Over here, we're going to do the same thing with the bulbo tree. Oh, it's not done. Okay, so we have to wait for the bulbo tree to actually finish getting uh, maturing. Um, the lantern fruit, you can just kind of grab one when it matures. The Chinese potato plant, um, I'm just going to grab one and replant. And you got to get the idea. Oops, I ate it. It wasn't what I meant to do. All right, now I planted it. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's just give it a little bit more time, and then the trees will be optimized, and you can see that. Alright guys, so for the final step of the video, I actually kind of wanted to show you the finished product, or in this case, the almost finished product. Uh, so over here on the left, we have the bulbo trees, and I actually uh, took some samples, and now there are some more that are growing. So basically, anytime you need water, just come over here, take a sample from the tree, and it's going to give you uh, plus 10 to water and plus 8 to food. I'm going to eat that right away because they don't last. Uh, the other thing is the marble melons. Uh, there are 16 in here, so what you can do is, if you want to eat, uh, pick up three. Oops, three. Eat those. And then take your knife and just cut the fourth one. And that gives you four more seeds. So you just go ahead and put the seeds back in, and it's pretty much self-sustaining. Two, three, four. All right, and while I was waiting for everything to grow, uh, I also came over here. Uh, I made some lockers for all the essential stuff and maybe not so essential stuff. And I also uh, had some time to make a fabricator. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this guide, and I hope it helps you out. Uh, basically, if you just set this up uh, wherever you want to put a base, you basically have uh, constantly replenishing food and water, and you don't have to worry about that for the rest of the game. All right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you see you next time. Bye-bye.